Hello, welcome to week two. Uh, here we go. Uh, so this week we're going to be talking about what does an assistant editor do. All the stuff is up on Moodle. We're going to go through some technical Adobe Premiere stuff here on this video. Okay, so this week we are talking about what does an assistant editor do. Um, and for our purposes here, we're cutting a narrative scene. So we're talking about um, an assistant editor for narrative uh, filmmaking. Uh, it's a little different depending on what you're cutting. Uh, first of all, we should mention that assistant editors um, are a dying breed. Uh, software and all the handy tools in Adobe Premiere and everything else uh, are working their hardest to streamline and automate many of the things assistant editors have always done. Um, and that's great. There are good things about that, um, that it saves money, except it takes money away from assistant editors. It saves money for overall productions. Um, but um, you do lose something. It, it, it's it's great to have another person working on a project with you, another brain helping keep track of everything. Um, and um, uh, on big projects, you you absolutely still need an assistant editor, even if Adobe Premiere can aut automate uh, many of these tasks. Um, now, you guys don't have budgets and rarely will be able to have assistant editors uh, anytime soon. So the, the tasks we're about to go through uh, are tasks you're gonna be doing when you're the editor, right? If you're um, uh, editing low budget or independent stuff, you're the whole deal. Um, and so you're going to have to do these skills as well um, before you get into the editing portion. Um, but uh, depending on where you go, you know, if you get hired at a big production company or you move out to L.A. or something, um, then you could find consistent work just as an assistant editor. The, you know, there are people who specialize in um, just doing these support um, tasks to get things ready for the editor to do the, the primary cutting. Okay, so what do assistant editors do? They do a ton of things. Uh, just to sort of summarize it, uh, the big word that is important here is organize, right? Editing is organization uh, from top to bottom, whether we're organizing footage or we're organizing uh, the number of takes or we're organizing how the, the, the scenes go together in the film. It's just organization all the way through. Um, the organization that goes on doesn't begin in Premiere. It starts with paperwork, hard drives, SD cards, labeling, keeping logs and documents. All of that um, needs to happen uh, for, for good editing to happen. And uh, this week, that's what you're practicing and what an assistant editor is responsible for. Synchronizing audio to picture. Um, if that is necessary. In the old days when we were cutting film, you always had to do that, and it was the assistant editor's job to go through and sync everything up. Today, sometimes it still is. You're shooting on a DSLR and a Zoom. You need somebody to go through and sync it. Adobe helps automate a ton of that, but it still needs to happen, um, and an assistant editor would do that. Uh, te technical help. Uh, oftentimes, the assistant editor is the person who needs to get on the phone um, and call technical support and be like, look, this isn't working, what's going on? Or hunt down the keyboard shortcut that you're looking for or hunt down whatever it is. Um, that is a real responsibility that assistant editors uh, often are, are um, held responsible for. Uh, assistant editors also are responsible for logging clips. Um, and uh, sometimes that logging is happening outside of Adobe, and oftentimes it's happening within Adobe. Um, and that's where we're labeling names, but we maybe also are putting location or there's any number of metadata that needs to be added. Um, this can especially become important uh, if you're working on really long form projects that are going to go on years and years or are maybe serial in nature, like a series. Like when early in my career, one of my responsibilities was working on this TV show uh, at the Toledo Zoo that we would do every summer. 
And so an important part of my assistant editor responsibilities was logging footage of like close up tiger eating, uh, long shot tiger, right? Logging all these behaviors that the tiger did in our B roll so that maybe two years from now, when we do another tiger story, when we need to go find this B-roll, we can go find it easily because I logged it very clearly, okay? Um, some cutting is happening as the assistant editor. Um, the editor, if they have too much going on or they would just like your take on something, will give you a scene to, to cut. So that uh, also is happening. Um, or maybe uh, sometimes you're going to cut a scene and then the editor is going to take it and do a final polish on it. Um, also exporting, right? Exporting the footage out and then doing quality control. So checking exports and making sure, um, there weren't any glitches, everything's right. That often is the assistant editor's responsibility. Okay. So what do you need to do this week to complete the assignment and show me that you did the work for project two? Uh, well, it begins outside of Adobe. You need to know where your media is and know where your project file is. And both of those things need to be backed up. Now, in this case, since I'm giving you the footage, I'm the backup. So you don't need to worry about backing up your media, but you do need to worry about backing up your project file. So what I want to see from you is how on your hard drive or Whatever your system is going to be, if you're doing this at the lab and you're taking in a hard drive or using the server, or if you're doing this at home on your own laptop, I want to see some screen grabs that say, here's my hard drive, Professor Gould. Here is how I'm organizing by project. And then uh, here's the footage, uh, how I'm organizing my media. I'm backing it up in this, um, sorry, don't worry about that. You don't have to back it up this time. I'm your backup. And then I want you to show me your project file. I'm keeping my project file here with my media, but then I'm also backing it up on Google Drive or I'm emailing it to myself or I'm keeping it on a little jump drive. So you need to write that, take some pictures to show me what you're doing. Um, an editor, it's your responsibility as an editor to safeguard the media and the project file. You, you can't lose that stuff. You lose the job, you lose the project, you lose your career. So you need to get serious uh, that you know where that stuff is. You can link, unlink media, do all of that stuff because you know where everything is located. Um, and that's part of the project uh, this week. Um, okay, now we can get into Premiere. So let's get into Premiere and talk about some stuff in there. All right, so here we are again in Adobe Premiere. Um, so what are we doing in Adobe Premiere to um, be good editors and assistant editors? The first thing is we need to make sure Adobe is, uh, Premiere is set up the way we like it. And to be honest, if you want a career where editing is a part of it, where you're getting paid um, to do editing, you need to get somewhat serious about understanding a little bit under the hood of Adobe what's happening. And by that, I mean the preferences, the options, the menus. You don't need to know everything. You don't need to be the, the premier guru. I mean, if you become that awesome, you definitely will find work and have a career. But you do need to have some familiarity with what's going on, um, at least to meet the needs you have. Okay. And then as you expand what you're doing, you expand, um, your understanding. So just a couple of things, some of these are probably review for you guys, but a couple of things I'm, I'll point out, um, right? If we go up here to preferences, this is what I'm talking about. Um, this menu and some of these tabs, you don't need to know what every single button does, but it's a good place to start and make it a goal to not just avoid this, but to dig into this and look up what some of this stuff means. So here we have general, appearance. The one I want to point out is auto save projects. Okay? Auto save projects. How um, frequently does this happen and how many versions will this uh, save for you? So every 15 minutes it's going to do this and it's going to keep 20. 
That works for me. If you would like it to save more frequently because maybe you've been burned by crashes, then change that. Um, if this for some reason is really low, like two or three, then change that. But this is a real lifesaver. If everything goes sideways, you can go and find this um, autosave file and recover what, what you did. The other thing you need to do, and this is um, up in the project uh, menu, and we can take a look at that right now. Right, so you have uh, your general settings, but then you also have project settings. Let's go to right here. Under scratch disk, right here, project autosave. So this is where the autosave is going. So you also need to know this. Um, it's great to have autosave um, files going places, but if you can't find them, they don't do you any good. Okay? So know where your autosave is going, know how frequently it's happening. That can really save your life. Okay, one other preference I particularly um, bugs me when it's not the way I like it to be. So let's go up to Premiere Pro Preferences. And this one, I believe, it used to be an audio. They've moved it to Timeline. Not sure why. Um, this one, Default Audio Tracks. So this is saying when you bring in a new piece of media um, and it has multiple tracks, like Audio Track 1 and 2, or even more if you're using like a 4K camera. Um, do those tracks come in as individual tracks or do they come in linked like a stereo track? Um, and what I want everything to be set at is mono. Not stereo, not use file, not 5.1 or anything like that. I want things to come in mono because I'm almost never, ever, ever working with stereo recordings. I, I'm not doing music here, right? I'm doing video and film. And so I need things to come in separately so that I can take things out and put things in. And this is one of those preferences that's really important um, uh, to understand how it works. So go in, make sure you're all set to mono.